Okay, what's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Friday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Uh, of course, if you need an orthopedist, you go to Brock. It's what you do. And if you need a roof, you call us, 364-1007, Restored Motions, restoredmotions.com and ProCharGV. ProCharGV.com. They're all right there on the crawl at the bottom. Um, okay, LSU beats Vandy 10-6. to They win game one of the series. Game two uh, tonight out at the box. It'll be a um, gauge jump going for the Tigers, trying to get a series win. Uh, LSU has not won a an SEC series in quite a while. Uh, the Tigers lost their last two SEC weekends of last year against Auburn and Mississippi State, and then obviously the first three this year. Now, you did win a national championship in between, but uh, it has been a hot minute since LSU has won an SEC series. So it would be nice to go get that done tonight uh, on your home field. So um, the uh, if you're on YouTube, please smash the like button as always. Subscribe up to the channel, Facebook, like the Matt Moscona page, share the post. Shout out to our LinkedIn folks as well who are watching live there. Um, this was certainly unconventional with, uh, Luke Coleman on the bump and, uh, Grayson Carter from Vandy, who's a big, talented right-hander, you know, throws upper nineties. He'll dot hundreds and hundred and ones from time to time, but mostly a fastball thrower and, uh, velocity isn't going to scare LSU and, uh, the Tigers after, um, if you're watching the game, uh, the Tigers went up and down in order in the first two innings on 16 pitches. Uh, not only were they not really competitive at bats, they uh, they were quick at bats. Uh, eight pitches in the first, eight pitches in the second for Grayson Carter. It was not a good vibe. I mean, remember when LSU played LeBaron Johnson in Texas, how much they made him work. Big, strong, armed kid with great velo and talent and everything. And they made him work, and they got him out of the game quickly because they, they drove his pitch count up. That was not happening through two innings with Grayson Carter. And then the third inning came, and the Tigers actually got some good baseball fortune for a team that desperately needed. Look, LSU put up a six spot in third. But they needed some baseball fortune, and they got it. Uh, and this is something that might end up being lost because of how Vandy ended up coming back, and you know, Braswell committed an error that, that really opened the door. Uh, it, it forced Holman out of the game and all that stuff. But remember what happened in the third inning. So Pearson leads off with a homer. It was a, it was a bomb too. Uh, while they were interviewing a Vanderbilt player during the broadcast, uh, uh, Pearson homer. So it's one nothing. Then Kling comes up and walks. Your eight hole hitter who's hitting about one eighty. Paxton Kling drew a full count walk. Nice night for Paxton Kling. More on that in a bit. Um. But this was the the sequence. So you're up one nothing. Kling on first, at a great speed. They decide to bunt Milam. Only Milam really looked like he was bunting for a hit. There it was the first pitch of the AB, and he ends up beating out the throw. So you have first and second with nobody out, one run already in, and this is where, in my opinion, the game changed. Mac Bingham's at the plate, and he rolls over a ground ball to second base. This is a tailor-made double play ball. And if Vandy, Vandy turns it, <clears throat> who's one of the best fielding teams in the league, by the way, if Vandy turns this double play, now you've got a runner at third with two outs and one run in. Remember, damage really limited here. But second baseman can't handle it, and he chucks the ball into left field. Kling scores, and now you got runners at the corner, still nobody out. It's 2 nothing. runners at the corners, nobody out, instead of one run in, runner at third, two outs. Dramatically different reality. From there, White would single, run would score. Jones grounded out. Uh but the runners advanced. Neal got a two RBI single. Travinsky gets hit by a pitch. Neal goes to third on a wild pitch, really heads up, 
by Brady Neal there to take the base because when Braswell grounded out, Neal scored, and then they batted around, so Pearson came up and struck out. But they ended up putting up a six spot that likely would have only been – that if the sequence continued, would have only been two runs um, had they turned that double play. But Tigers got some good baseball fortune there. So um, – the other thing, too, from the game is, look, Luke Holman was really good. He ran into trouble in the fifth and ultimately got through it. He gave up the, the three-run homer, which is so disappointing because, man, Vandy just Vandy's hit four home runs in SEC play going into last night. The kid who hit the homer, that was his, that was his 10th career homer in three years. So a guy that doesn't really hit homers, um, you know, hit a three-run bomb, and you know, that all came with two outs. So you went single, strikeout, fly out, and then Braswell's error allowed Diaz to reach. You should have been out of the inning, but that's when Holman came in. That, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was in the sixth. Sorry, it was in the sixth. So Braswell should have gotten you out of the inning in the sixth with a 9-4 lead. Uh, but he commits the error if they bring in Bingham or bring in... Herring, who gives up a couple more hits and two more run scores. So now it's nine to six. You can see Jay Johnson too, man. You can see Jay Johnson going to the mound. He was pissed at Braswell. Um, I mean, got to be better. Anyway, um, okay. We'll say some good ones. Anyway, they were able to get home. Griffin Herring finished out the game for LSU. Tigers added uh, a run in the eighth, so they win uh, 10 to six. They got the win they needed. Ultimately, and you used you used uh, Holman and Herring. You would have loved with a nine nothing lead to not have had to even get Griffin Herring warm. Um, but you know, Vandy broke through. They're a good team. They made it a game, and uh, but LSU ends up winning. So ten to six, the losing streak ends. LSU goes to three and seven in conference play. Now go win the weekend. All right, uh, we'll say some good mornings here, Brian. Win, what's going on, Bubba Tatum? Woodu. Uh, seeing JJ Light of Braswell in the mound during the pitching change did my heart good. Something has to change. He's the exact opposite of Kling. Um, you mean that he's a bad defender, but he's brought his bat? Yeah, it's definitely not. Um, not what what I think we had all anticipated. The weird thing about Kling, I'm sorry about Braswell, is he was awesome in the fall he was a great hitter in the fall started the season playing good defense but not really bringing the bat now in conference play he's your leading hitter um but i mean look the error in the 10th last week against arkansas cost you the game and the error in the sixth uh last night forced holman out of the game I mean, Holman would have finished that inning. You'd have been in a nine to two ball game or a nine to four ball game. Instead, error two more run score. It's nine to six, and now you're in a real tenuous situation. Yeah, not just errors, costly errors. But you mentioned Kling. How about Paxton Kling? Drew the walk. He doubled. Um, you know, maybe it, it maybe it is something as simple as. Him just slowing down, batting down in the order. He was one for three last night with a walk. He did strike out, but he also doubled. So I'll take I'll take one for three with a walk and a double for my eight hole hitter every night. Who plays great center field? Kelly Gross, Von Bluesman, Jesse Brown, Matt been sick the last few days. Did I see the Saints sign linebacker from Washington? Your thoughts? They did. Um, Kalecki, who uh, played collegiately at Michigan. Uh, just finished his rookie contract, four years. Uh, talked about him yesterday on AFR. So um, uh, Hudson Kalecki is his name. And um, it's he's a special teams depth guy. But, you know, when you look at, at the, um, you know, at the, the, the depth they had at linebacker last year with the likes of um, you know, Nephi Sewell, Ty Summers, um, you know, Andrew Dowell was a guy who was going to make the team before he tore his ACL. You bring you already brought in Willie Gay, so <clears throat> your first three are set there with uh, Davis Warner Gay, and you know I think Hudson Kalecki could 
could be your like the next guy up, him or Nafai Sewell. So you definitely had a, a a really good special teamer and a guy who started 12 games at linebacker in his career as well. So I like it. It's a depth piece, but I like it. Uh, Gary Petrie, morning, Uncle, Son- Uncle Scone. Nice bounce back win. Haley Van Lith in the portal. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, I think that probably surprised a lot of people to see Van Lith go in the portal. It did. I, I was surprised. Um, and uh, I-, I think, I- look, I-, I think what what you're seeing there is Haley Van Lith was one of the top scorers in the country a year ago at Louisville. She comes to LSU, and you don't have a point guard. And so in her senior year, she changes positions and goes from a scorer to a facilitator. And so I don't want any Haley Van Lith uh, uh, slander here. She deserves a tremendous amount of credit because she was a team player this year. She took one for the team. Like in an era of transfer portal NIL when fans love to crush players for being all me, 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 Haley Van Lith did a super selfless team-oriented thing this year in, in playing point guard. So now she's going to come back for her super senior year, and she's going to go somewhere where she can play a two-guard and score. So I don't blame her for it. I'm I'm bummed. I mean, I wish she was staying. She's a great player. But, you know, Michaela Williams is going to be your two-guard. And she averaged 14 a game this year as a true freshman. So. I get it, uh, but I'm a little bummed. Jason Horn, what's up? Fred Gidry, see the clip of Caleb Jackson catching the ball in that swing pass. He's going to be awesome in space if he plays like that. There's a um, The full practice Saturday morning is open to the media uh, in Tiger Stadium, so I uh, do plan to be in that number. So it'll be my first time watching the team in the spring, so I'll be able to give you all a full report tomorrow. Jay Borden, what's going on? Pat Husman, good morning. Let's stay positive and motivated. Grant Roban, the ninth inning, looked eerily familiar. I was anxious, even with a nine-run lead. I wasn't comfortable, which is sad for LSU baseball ATM. Uh, Steve Bernard, Wendell Norman, what up? Brett DeGroo, Shelly Prescott, morning. Third inning was fun, fun one to watch. Again, remember, the third inning was buoyed by a... An egregious error by Vanderbilt, but LSU needed good baseball fortune, and they got it in that third inning. And I like to believe it's because the baseball gods were so offended by Bland- by Vanderbilt's black uniforms. Those are an abomination, and they should never be worn again. <laughs> James McKinney, morning, Matt. I think Mulkey needs to put a full court press on Talia Scott for Arkansas to replace Haley. Uh, LSU needs a point guard. That's what they need. Uh, David, good morning. Uh, Joey B19 looks like Vandy pitched off against us. They're two bench starters, have yet to pitch a long way to go this weekend. Uh, Abner Neal. Um, Joey B, by the way, uh, uh, we talked to Chris Lee from VandySports.com uh, two days ago. Uh, who by the, so Chris Lee is one of the really good SEC baseball um, uh, media members. He um, like I would put Hunt Palmer in this category as well. By the way, um, there are a lot of people. Uh, Chase Parham over at Rebel Grove is another one. There's a lot of people who cover their team. Like I'm one of those guys. I know a ton about LSU baseball. I don't know a ton about every team in the SEC. Um, Chris Lee from Vandy Sports, he also runs Southeastern 14, if you're familiar. Chris knows a ton about all of SEC baseball. Like he's a really good SEC baseball guy. Um, so when so I, I referenced that just to say, like, you there's credibility behind what I'm about to tell you. So um Devin Futrell is a guy that's been at Vandy for a while now. Um all of Andy pitchers wear weird numbers too. Future wears ninety five, but uh, yeah. Chris Lee told us two days ago that Future probably won't start this weekend. So if he's got a five four zero ERA, and it might be a thing where they where they skip him this weekend. 
So there may be a uh, uh, a whole staff type approach in a game for uh, for in one of the next two for Vandy. So um, I so I don't think it's completely accurate to say Vandy pitched off because their two best starters have yet to pitch. That's not exactly true uh, because Futrell likely isn't going to throw this weekend. Abner Neal, uh, Tommy Primo, Matt Plavidal, good morning. Thanks for the shout out. I was off finally. Uh, it's said and relayed. You got it, man. You got it. You got it. What did I say? Like uh, whether rain, neither rain nor no nor, nor, nor sleet or whatever it is. What's the thing about the post office? Uh, it's because someone was saying, "Oh, I thought the streak was broken yesterday because I did a late morning scone," and I was like, "Nope, I'll never miss, man." Like the post office, like my guy Matt there. Matthew Rhodes, morning. Do you have any comments on Baker's press conference? Yeah, man. So I would actually direct you. I would hope you would uh, you'd go to um, to the YouTube uh, after further review LSU YouTube channel. So uh, ha- I did two different segments on on Baker's comments. One about Harold Perkins, and one about the secondary. Okay, see they posted the Perkins one already. So um, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, copy this link here. I'm going to post in the comments. So if you're interested, this was uh, Baker talking about Harold Perkins. And uh, um, I think it was a very honest commentary on Perkins and moving him to inside backer, which there's a big difference between saying, you know, Harold's great and he can play inside backer and that's where we think he's best. And Blake Baker saying what he said on, on Thursday which was, as I paraphrase, um, you know, he's never played an uh, off-ball backer. And the only way to get that to slow down is reps. But he's a guy that's physically capable of doing it. We just have to give, get him reps. And I believe he'll be really good at it. So, you know, I think that was a very realistic approach at the Perkins situation. We all So I just posted that, that link in there if you want to watch it. And then also... Um, Spent a good amount of time talking about the secondary uh, as well. And uh, in particular, highlighting uh, Sage Ryan and Major Burns. And I think the reason that's impactful is because they're both playing their more natural position this year. And they weren't a year ago. And that was one of the problems why your secondary was so bad last year. Uh, Brian Wynn, do you think Arkansas goes after Will Wade as their next head basketball coach? Maybe, Brian. I got asked that question on AFR yesterday, like right when the news broke. And I think I think they would be smart too. And I know I told you all this before, but you know, there was some scuttle that the, the feeling was Nate Oates would leave Alabama this year, maybe take, you know, Michigan job or one of the big jobs that were going to be open. And if so, Alabama was going to target Will Wade if they lost Nate Oates. Well, Nate Oates, of course, now is in the final four and he's not leaving. So uh I, I wouldn't be surprised if Arkansas called Will Wade. They should. Um, I would love to see Will stay at McNeese for another year. I think it'd be great for that program to continue to solidify their standing. Um, but uh, but yeah, if you're Arkansas, you should call. I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, Brad David, if college football goes to a super league, what would happen to Greg Sankey's job? Uh, Greg Sankey might be the commissioner of that super league. So what he's referring to is the athletic uh, that had a piece yesterday, um, a report that um, there are some college administrators working with NFL personnel on the formation of a college football super league. It would be, uh, you know, eight, 10 team um, divisions, conferences, however you want to say it, uh, 70 teams and another 10 um, that would be subject to, to relegation and promotion. So, um. And I've said forever, we're headed for that. We're headed for just one college football. You're not going to have conferences, uh, as we know it, that all negotiate their own TV deal. You're going to have, very likely, a unionized workforce, and you're going to have something that looks like the NFL. Um, And it's going to be great for college football because college football is uh, the structure of college football is a farce. It is. It's just the way it it is and always has been as a farce, but we love it because of our passion and emotion for the teams we love. And the powers that be have preyed on that passion and force fed us crap games that we don't want to see in a bogus postseason system. 
Hey, Dad, good morning. Ah, good morning from Aiden. What up, buddy? Uh, my mom and dad are up in Kansas visiting my sister and her family, and Aiden is my little godchild. So good morning, Aiden. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, Armstrong grappling. Offense scored seven earned runs on nine hits. Holman pitched really well outside of the home run. Bullpen shut the door. Good win. Largely agree with all that. Dale Broussard, Vandy pitcher, .79 ERA, got demolished. Grant Roban, sorry, Matt. That was the worst run on sentence on my last comment. Brutal. I'm going to go back and find it now, Brant. Oh, the... <laughs> got me. Um, all right. Tiger Diver, what's going on? Uh, Dale Herring can be a weekend starter next season. Dale Herring can be a weekend starter this season. Uh, you don't have a real number three. He could, and I'll tell you, I know they've considered that this year, uh, moving Heron into the rotation. And that might be something they do before the end of the season. <laughs> Read rule. Morning, Scone. I know we won't want to change Herring's role. Could he potentially slot in the Sunday starter and so the whole staff approach? He's been phenomenal. Yes. Um, And not only in the Sunday role, I think there's a possibility you could throw him at the front of your rotation as well. Uh, Robert Lynch, Lowell Cormier, Matt Plavidal. Matt, I'm an OG sconer. Been listening to your show since 2012. Love it. Hell yeah, you're an OG. Well, no. Well, hold on. Hold on. So, an OG AFR. Well, OG AFR goes all the way back to 2010, Matt. Um. So AFR launched February 17th, 2010. Morning Scone, uh, as I found out, uh, shout out to my guy Stephen Miller, who sent me this on Twitter a couple days back, was March 27th, I believe. March 27th of 2018 was our first ever Morning Scone. So we're six years into Morning Scone. So you've been around a while, Matt. No doubt, no doubt about it. You ha you hang around watching my stuff for more than a decade. Yeah, man. You uh you qualify for sure. Uh, Brent Saint Germain, morning. Good win for the Tigers. Hopefully this star turn around in SEC. Amen. Uh, let's see. Tim Gotro, huge win. Got to keep it rolling. Courtney Storer, what's going on? Charlie Cavell, Bailey C. Let's have a moment for Herring. He's been awesome. Came into a tough spot yesterday. A lot of couple runs to get in, but um, it was pretty awesome. Jim Arsenault, good morning. Go Real and Matt, thoughts on special teams. Uh, also, what woes do you anticipate could be a thorn in the Tigers' side this upcoming season? Well, um, it's, a, it's a fair question. Uh, special teams, I'm hopeful, um, but it's going to be the third year in a row you don't have a dedicated special teams coordinator. I know Slade Nagel is going to do that in the same way Bob Diaco did a year ago and Polian did, did two years ago. But you don't have a dedicated special teams coordinator. And without that, I don't know why you would anticipate the results being dramatically improved. Um, that's one. Let's see, Thorne. Um, I still don't know if you're good at cornerback. You know, the, the guys that you had last year weren't great. You hope they grow up and get better. You hope that you know, Jair Brown coming in, the trades from Ohio State, is a really good player. You hope Zy Alexander gets back healthy. Like, you hope you're better. But I don't know that you're definitively better. And I know nobody wants to hear this, Gorilla, but Garrett Nussmeyer is a question mark. Um, in the little bit he's played in his career, he's made questionable decisions with the ball and has been turnover prone. So... You know, I th I think he's going to be really good. But you asked, you know, what could be a thorn in the side. I mean, if Garrett reverts to, to his old ways and turns the ball over, that could be a thorn in the side. All right, smash the like button if you would. Subscribe up to the channel, Facebook, like the Matt Moscona page, share the post. Appreciate y'all. Uh, I got to go quickly here. Charlie Cavell, obviously, Paxton Kling is struggling. He's been hurt or overmatched. But Charlie, I've talked about Paxton a ton, and I've had enough conversations about Paxton Kling with, with, with scouts who, listen, he's a draft-eligible sophomore who's the number one player in Pennsylvania, who's a five-tool guy, 
who coming into this year was a top 100 overall prospect on everybody's draft boards, and he's pressing. I think he's trying to show he can hit with power, and so he's swinging over the top of breaking balls, and everything is a dead pull. I mean, he's trying to dead pull everything the left hit the ball out of the yard, and as a result, he's striking out a ton instead of being patient, going up the middle and the other way. Think about the approach Alex Malazzo has taken from being a guy that struck out all the time to now he's a contact hitter that goes up the middle and the other way. Like, that's the secret. Let the ball travel more. Be a patient hitter. Gather more information the closer the ball comes. And you're not guessing. And drive the ball up the middle and the other way. And if Paxson Kling does that, he he can be a more than serviceable offensive a piece in this lineup. David Tolson, Tigers overcame self-inflicted stress to win, so that's nice. Greg Duga, Haley Van Liff was victim of situation of circumstance. Hate to see her go. She'll bounce back wherever she lands. David Bass, good morning. Go Tigers. It's built on the first game. Jeff McKithen, good morning, Jeff. I'm I'm not sure if they told you, but I met uh, a couple at the Pels game the other night that are friends of yours. They didn't tell me their names. They just said, Scone, we got to take a picture. We're friends with Jeff. And so uh, I don't know if they showed you the picture. I, they didn't tell me their names. Um, uh Really great people, though. Uh, he was he was a ball guy like me. You head shaved, and uh, his wife, girlfriend, fiance was a, 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 a blonde haired woman. Um, really cool people. Anyway, I, I, my interaction with them was brief, but they were great. So if you see them, or they or they, um, uh, if they let you know, tell them I enjoyed I enjoyed meeting them. Seemed like great great people. They were very very kind. Uh, I love their energy. Just good people. Ryan Amanda Gidry. Good morning. Ah, there we go. Jeff, the next, I should have waited. You met my boy Mike and his wife, Aaron, at the Pels game. Yes, yeah, so tell Mike and Aaron they were great. I really enjoyed meeting them. They were great. James McKinney, Scott can run the point, and she was uh, one of the top scorers in the SEC this year. Uh, Justin Holman, finally. That that, that skid was going to end eventually, right? Uh, Vaughn, I know the wheels of justice turn slow. Still no update on Trey Holly. No update on Trey Holly. But that was my comment. Let's see. Trivia Carter, good morning. Bill Caffey, Edward Cooper, win is a win. Bob Raymond, good morning from North Carolina. Okay. Go real. Why are people hating on your Perkins alarm video? Are pe people hating on the Perkins alarm video? I thought it was hilarious. Uh, so if you weren't listening to the Perkins or the so Baker's doing his, his press conference and he says um he says I think Harold Perkins could play inside linebacker he's improved exponentially and as soon as he says that the alarm starts going off in football ops I mean like the I mean it is as he's saying Perkins can play inside backer I think he's improved exponentially the alarm goes off if you can't appreciate the comedic timing of that then you have no sense of humor. Like you're just being an unapologetic homer with no sense of humor. I'm not saying he Perkins won't be a good linebacker. Also. I'm just saying the comedic timing of that when literally everybody has sat here and wondered why are you moving Harold Perkins inside again? And then the 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 DC's talking about it. as soon as he tries to compliment Perkins moving inside the an alarm sounds, that's hilarious. And if you don't think so, then you have no sense of humor. Uh, Taylor Hudson, good morning. Brian Penn, good morning from St. James, Missouri. All right. Kirk Taylor, what's good, man? Way the NFL is going. You can't even tackle without getting a flag. Hope the college game doesn't go the way of the NFL. Kirk, I couldn't disagree with you more, man, because college targeting is the worst rule in football. The college targeting rule where any contact, like contact to the head, to the head or neck, forcible contact to the head or neck area, the way that it's enforced is atrocious. You're throwing kids out of games. So I... They flatly disagree. I have no problem with them banning hip drop tackles. Like you have enough market research that shows there's a you're 25 percent more likely to have an injury on a hip drop tackle. Okay, get rid of hip drop tackling. I'm good with that. That is a dangerous play. That's the play that snapped Jordan Travis's leg in half. Yeah, get rid of hip drop tackling. Craig, the different eras of college football. What was your favorite? Mine was the BCS. Constant analysis of who could make it to a championship. Kept me engaged to multiple teams, even when LSU was out of the picture. To me, it was that was college football. Um, the BCS was better than having pollsters vote. Um, 
14 playoff is better than the BCS, a 12 team playoff is going to be better than the 14 playoff. We are finally improving to where we'll actually, because Craig, what's going to happen is what you're going to see is more teams are going to be engaged longer. Just like we're looking at right now with the NBA, you are, it's, it's, are you going to make the playoff? Are you going to have a home game in the playoff? Are you going to get a buy in the playoff? There's so many more teams that are going to be, that are going to be interested later. It's going to be better. It's going to be better for college football and intrigue. It's going to it's going to make games more meaningful. Instead of going into the last weekend saying, "Am I playing to go to the Outback Bowl or the Capital One Bowl or sit whatever they are now?" Like you're going to be saying, "Am I playing to get into the playoff? Am I playing to get a home game?" And oh, what did, what did they do on this weekend? Like it's going to create so much more intrigue around the country. Irfan Sayad, Mitchell Prine, please tell me why you bump with two outs and the guy on third. You could just stop with, please tell me why you bunt. I mean, I could also bring up the fact that Ethan Fry pinch hit for Josh Pearson last night, and he tried to lay down a bunt, and he popped it up to the catcher. Why are you pinch hitting Ethan Fry for Josh Pearson to have him pop up a bunt? I'm with you. Never bunt. Uh, Mark Allen, I get the change. I don't want to lose the magic that makes college football great. You're not. It's going to be better. That's the point. Like, it's going to be better. The thing that makes college football great is your passion for your team. That's what that that is the that is the magic that makes college football great. It's fans' passion for their team. Like, were you any less thrilled watching LSU foot watching Jaden Daniels this year because he was a transfer? Because there's a four team playoff as opposed to a stupid old bowl system? Of course not. You're all like. When LSU puts on the purple and gold and runs through the eight-shaped goal post and the golden band from Tigerland is on the field and they play those four notes, you're still going to get chills. And when Alabama comes into Tiger Stadium, you're still going to hate them. And when LSU goes to Auburn and the War Eagles flying, like you're still going to love. Like it's it that like you it's your passion for your team. The problem has been like you get force fed an awful system. We have been force-fed an awful system. Like it's so easy to see. People just don't like change. You're like you're not going to lose the magic of college football. The magic of college football is your love for your team, and that's not going to go anywhere. What, are you going to stop loving LSU? Come on, Maddie Tall. Why did LSU pinch it Friday bunt? Patrick Burglass needed that win. We got it. I never panicked. Knew we needed it. Mitchell, yeah, all you're asking about Fry, but I'm with you. Hey, man, y'all know how I feel about bunting, all right? Uh, Bruce Parker, OG AFR, back when Condon used to make guest appearances, classic. Uh, Luis Aleman, GameCube, man. Actually, Condon's appearances weren't even OG AFR. Condon didn't start making appearances until we moved to the little closet studio. The initial uh, ESPN studio is different, but uh, anyway. GameCube man, sorry, I don't want to see Braswell short anymore. No reason he should still be there. Um, here's the tricky part. He's been your best offensive player in SEC play. He's actually leading in SEC play, he's leading the league in on base percentage. So, like defensively, I'm with you. You could play Steven Milam at short. You could a hundred percent play Steven Milam at short. Um, but at this point, when your offense has struggled so much, can you justify taking Michael Braswell's bat out of the lineup? Um, Kirk, Matt, got an extra ticket for Saturday. You want to go? Can't, Kirk. Appreciate the offer very much, but uh, we're having a joint birthday party for mother-in-law and uh, and brother-in-law whose birthdays are on the... Uh... Oh, by the way, happy birthday, Mama Scone. Uh, today is April 5th. It's Mama Scone's birthday. Tomorrow, April 6th, is Erica's mom's birthday. So our mom's birthdays are a day apart. Now, not the same year, but uh, anyway... Happy birthday to Mama Scone. So, Kirk, thank you for the offer very much. Uh, I appreciate it. But rain check. I uh, We're having a party here at that. I'm going to LSU football practice tomorrow morning, coming home, getting the house ready. We're having the whole family over tomorrow. So thank you for the offer. Uh, does Ricky Collins have a legit chance to start? No, not this year, Trivia. Uh, it's Garrett's team. Deborah Coward, good morning. Felt good last night. Gymnastics and baseball. Yeah, congrats to gymnastics as well. I did have the, uh, the banner for gymnastics. Uh, gymnastics at the high score. Uh, in their half of the regional, so they've advanced the regional final one step closer uh, to that elusive natty. Um, 
make defense great again. Can you imagine how great the first LSU home playoff game will be? Bingo. Imagine LSU in December in Tiger Stadium hosting Ohio State in a playoff game. You're going to tell me you're not interested in that? You'd rather go with a, a skeleton roster to Orlando or to, or to Tampa in front of 15,000 people and play backups from Wisconsin? That's what you that that's the that's the magic of college football y'all would like to see. Give me a break. Uh, Cliff Nelson, what's good, my dude? Cliff, I loved your tweet last night. It's so, <laughs> uh, never bunt and uh, don't leave numbers on the microwave. Uh, those those are my two core tenets in life. Bubba Smith, Danny Brewick. Oh, I gotta go. Um. Uh, Team seems to be able to get the starters, struggle with relievers. Is that a scouting issue? Sometimes it's just matchups, man. The offense has struggled. LSU's offense has struggled. There's no way around it. Um, Gorilla, the way William Montgomery says, kill Tony, I ain't ever going to stop watching Morning Scone. I don't know who William Montgomery is, but I but I dig it. Uh, Kurt Taylor, um, we will have a... Yes, we. I promise you that... My solemn vow in the month of May, we will have a roofing party, a roofing hat party in the month of May. That will happen. Okay. In the month of May, we will have a roofing hat party. Uh, Von Bluesman, happy birthday to Mama Scone. Bubba, bowl game last year was the most flat atmosphere I've experienced a bowl game. Let's make games meaningful. That's my point. You don't want to lose the magic of college football. You don't. You don't want to lose, you know, six and six teams going to bowl games, playing with a bunch of starters who opted out, or playing without the starters who opted out. That's you don't. You don't. That's that's the magic of college football. You don't want to lose. You don't want to lose the. Uh, let's see. You don't want to. You don't want to lose the. The Myrtle Beach Bowl, huh? You, you mean you're you'd be devastated to lose the avocados from Mexico Cure Bowl that saw Miami of Ohio play App State to a thirteen to nine score. You mean you'd you'd be just devastated if we lost the Starco Brands LA Bowl hosted by Gronk that saw UCLA beat Boise State 35 to 22. That's the magic of college football you don't want to lose. Or maybe or maybe the roof the roofclaim.com Boca Raton Bowl where South Florida blasted Syracuse 45 to nothing. Yes, the magic of college football. You're right. My apologies. How could we forget the Serve Pro First Re Responders Bowl? at Gerald J. Ford Stadium in Dallas, Texas, where Texas State beat Rice 45-21. to 21. I don't know how we're going to get by, guys. I don't know how college football is going to survive without the AutoZone Liberty Bowl where Memphis beats Iowa State 36-26. to 26. It's the magic of college football, guys. I don't know how we're going to possibly survive without that system. But somehow, someway, I think we might just make it. I got to go. Y'all are awesome. Have a great day. LSU Daily is already live. Subscribe up on your favorite podcast app and uh, AFR3.